So last night I did a talk, and the talk was about building ECS with um, a Node.js app, and it kind of blew up on me in the middle of it, because live coding is difficult. Sometimes when you do live coding, you expect certain things to happen, and they don't. And you'll sit there puppeteering like a marionette trying to make sure that your application is loading properly so that the thing that you're talking to people about makes sense. Well, unfortunately, when I go to the endpoint and say, hey, um, hmm, where are you? Is this working? <laughs> Jeez, it didn't come up right away. And it was a matter of waiting maybe another two or three seconds. And I had tested it, and I knew that my ELB was going to take a few extra minutes to come up because Come on, waiting for an ELB stinks. It just takes a while. Um, and they're working on it, they're working on it. These amazing ladies are up at AWS. They're making my ELB for me. And I'm standing there waiting for it to load. And I'm telling these people with this wonderful Docker thing, like, you know, once this comes up, you can walk along bread and get to uh, your application so that you could start storing information if you need in this incredible document database known as MongoDB. So, um, yeah, thanks, that's a plug. Uh, anyhow, and if you feel like dressing in a strange way while you're doing your talk, don't feel bad. Everybody wants an opportunity to express themselves, and sometimes an endpoint might not come up, but maybe you'll look funny, you can keep people entertained. I know these guys, they looked awful. Anyway, thank you very much. Uh, use Mongo. All right, sometimes we construct an image of other people in our head that isn't quite realistic. The users we put together aren't really what we think they are, but we treat them like they're real. And this can have some negative consequences in the long run. We build tools that are completely unsuited for the job. They come in and we're like, let's just run this tool and it's going to end real poorly. Uh, especially because I'm sure there's a power line through there. So you can run into a lot of problems when you build for these imaginary users. And you spend a ton of time on this construction. You do all your work uh, building these uh, stories about the users, how they're going to put together your app. But if you haven't actually tested it, it's completely theoretical. Looks wonderful, no actual evidence to work with. <laughs> and you end up constructing something that kind of looks like what you would hope for in the end, but might not be what anyone was really expecting out of it. Uh, and it does serve a purpose, you can use it, but it's not quite what you're looking for. So you try to find a new way to put things together, something that's slightly more efficient to drag you out of the old methodology into a better way of looking at your users. Through more detailed uh, user testing, some focus groups, and using internal users. Some of your internal users might surprise you, and you'll find someone with a ton of use cases that you never thought was there. Someone who's maybe a little bit more hip than you were expecting, and has some plans. And you can just come in and have a user who's going to help you out. So, the art of making bread is very much like the art of creating APIs. They can be different usage, you can have several of them behind a gateway, and people that deliver it are strange. So, but what you start out with bread ends up being the beginnings of something that you know eventually will explode and become a part of history. <laughs> That's guaranteed to happen, so uh, if you can make sure that you are the kind of person that is willing to experiment, try new things, Put things together that you never thought would go together, because when you do something like that, when you take that chance, YOLO, as Bridget would say, you guys, if you're kidding me, <laughs> you could end up being the Marlboro Man on the back of a cat. And when you are that person, really, who can tell you what to do after that? All right, so, and then things fall from the sky. Uh, I, I, it appears that my high energy is pretty much all I'm contributing to this because I, I, you know, this, uh, we're falling from the sky and you get a house, a perfectly good car, and then if you want to go to Mars, then do it, you know? I mean, who's going to stop you from going to Mars after you've already ridden a cat and made bread and built the Hindenburg? You know, JavaScript uh, these days is like, uh, <laughs> well, it's like somebody who has a little bit more uh, 
dan two dangerous things than what they are able to deal with. Uh, you, the, everybody sort of goes through the process of meticulously taking parts and putting them into containers, into modules, into this, and packaging them together, and rendering them for the browser. And, uh, you know, the <laughs> what, what ends up happening is that your customers don't actually care, like, what the underlying process is. They, they really just care about, you know, what ends up happening. In this case, um, <laughs> what ends up happening can be very destructive to people. It's not always something that, you know, you're, you're, it's, oh, you know, it just broke. It, it can actually affect real life. So we have to take it seriously. Uh, once, you know, oh, man. <laughs> uh, I, 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 I I have nothing that can relate <laughs> to this at this time. Uh, but, you know, wow. So, right, right. What you really want is to be able to see, like, what needs to happen, what's going wrong, and uh, why it all did go wrong. <laughs> Good job.